How do I make these patterns for my 3D prints in Tinkercad? Today I'm going to show you plus answer some more of your questions. My name is Jimmy. I'm drinking some good old fashioned Folgers coffee today and this is Coffee and Trains. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them, and if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. We're going to start with a question today from Ron Hart. Ron asks, what is the height of the bridge on my layout? Well, let's go take a look. It appears to be sitting right at two and a quarter inches. For our friends in the rest of the world, we're looking at about 55 millimeters. Josh Batista asks if I will ever try an in-scale steam locomotive. If I'm being honest, I was not considering buying one at all for the longest time. This is because in-scale steam locomotives tend to have more problems because of their complexity and the smaller parts. I will say that my layout is built with a radii that steamers can handle. Now this all changed as I began to approach the end of constructing my layout. I am looking at the next chapter in my journey in this hobby and I think I'm going to go into a bit more of a collecting side or a collecting phase at least for a little while. So now I'm cautiously pricing out steam locomotives and figuring out budgets. So to answer your question, Josh, yes, I am considering in-scale steam locomotives, just not right now. Let's go to our next question, which is from the Postal Biker. The Postal Biker asks, can Arduino change polarity of the track on a DC model railroad? Yes, you can do this, but there are some consideration, considerations that you need to make. First of all, if you are just trying to figure out how to reverse the direction of travel on your train using an Arduino-based controller, I've actually done a whole video on building a DC train controller with an Arduino. If you're talking about switching which feeder wire is connected to which rail, you will need to use relays. This, the thing with this is you have to consider using something like a flyback relay or a snubber to prevent voltage spikes. The next question comes from M, literally M. Why does DCC signals send along the track instead of using wireless? Well, first, there are locomotives that do use Bluetooth. They're typically in the larger scales, definitely not really that much in in scale, if at all. I have never really seen one. And there are two main reasons why DCC does not use wireless signals. The first is while the technology exists, it's pretty expensive to build into a small package, especially in in scale. The second is there's not much demand for a system that can directly connect to a locomotive wirelessly. With the creation of JMRI, DCC++ EX, and various cell phone applications, you don't really need to be able to connect directly to the locomotive wirelessly. Now this will probably change in the future, but even then, it may be no more than an extra feature that you can buy and not the standard. Now before we go on to the next question, let's talk about some of the coffees that you guys are drinking. Let's see here, Eric Williams says that he is drinking at Starbucks. Always a solid choice. Works For Me says that he's drinking Shul's Hazelnut Cream. And last but not least, Trackside Rail Productions says that he hates coffee, which why am I putting this up here? But he says he's drinking Diet Pepsi. So thank you guys so much for posting that right there. You can share the coffees that you are drinking in the comments below. And I love hearing from you guys. So up next we have Little King Cobra's Den and he is asking, he's trying to decide between N and HO scale. He says he only has a 4x8 space to work with but loves the sound and smoke aspects of it. He also says he has more N scale track on hand than HO track. So I always like to say when starting out, figure out what is most important to you right now. Seems like a lot of the features that you want revolve around steam locomotives and HO scale is definitely the way to go when it comes to steam locomotives. If you're looking for that smoke, if you're looking for a lot more like 
bassy sound effects and that kind of stuff. Obviously, Insco has sound, but HO just has more room for bigger speakers. And 4x8 is really not a terrible size. I've done a whole video on that that I'll link at the end. And you will just want to make sure that you use those 22 inch radius track for your main line if you want to run bigger locomotives. And last but not least, let's talk about the question you guys probably clicked here for. Johnny Star asked, how do I do the brick patterns on my models in Tinkercad? So when I do 3D prints, I build all my models in Tinkercad, and I think it's best to show you guys. All right, so what I have here is I'm in Tinkercad, and for those of you that don't know, this is just a free online program that you can use to build all sorts of things in 3D space. You can build circuits, all this kind of stuff. So the first thing that I'm going to do is basically, I try to make these giant stencils and cutouts that you can do, but I do them by making solids first. So what I do is I'm gonna make the rough sides of a brick. So. Let's see here, we got 20 by nine. So that's about a two to one. I'm gonna do, I like to do pretty close to a three to one. That's about what looks right for a brick. And then what I will do is I do control D and then I move, and then I move it and give it probably a millimeter to a space right there just to get that and then I do D again and at some point there it goes okay at some point you can just do it where you just go all the way across like that and you can see I can make quite a long line of bricks so that's a pretty good line to start with so then the next thing that I do is I copy all of those bricks and I duplicate them using control D again. And then I'll grab them using this little upward cone right here, which is in the middle of all of them. And I bring them up I do that. And then I want to bring them over about to where they're splitting. So you can see, you can already see where I'm beginning to get these brick designs. I actually might want to bring them down a notch. Yeah, that looks a little better right there. Then I can duplicate again, 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 again. So there is that. Now what I'll do right here is I will literally go from one edge of that to the other. So I have that. Well, let's you want to line up and get a nice even side and then I'll highlight a bunch of them right here. And you want to make sure when you do this, see how I have like the little ends right here and I have this open and then I have this closed. So we're going to copy that. So control C and I'm going to delete all of those. And I'm going to paste it and now I have a little brick wall. Now you can make this as long as you want. Like if I duplicate this and bring this out and then you just kind of link them together. Might be still too much of a gap, but out right there, make sure they are all lined up and then I'll highlight them. Just make sure they're all aligned by clicking this little align tool and then I'll just boop. All right, so there is that. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna highlight them all and I'm gonna group them by clicking this little button right here, which is also control G. Okay, so apparently there was an issue. I am going to just grab a small group of these. All right, so we have this group right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, you can see I have a nice brick pattern right here. Actually, I'm going to edit this a little bit. Now, one thing you wanna make sure when you make one of these brick patterns is you wanna have this be able to seam into the other side because you're going to be layering these. So. 
Once I have them all together like that, I'm going to group them. And now you can see I have a big group. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn them into a whole shape. So all I go is where the color is and change it from solid to whole. And then the next thing that I do is I grab a solid. And I'm going to zoom in here. I bring it about most of the way in, leave a little bit. And then you just want to line it up right on those edges. Do a little bit of a line right there. And make sure there's one on the bottom. Or no, right there should be fine. Yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll line that up right there. And then we highlight the whole thing. So you can see I have like to where it's just going to kind of flow into the next brick. So I will group them. And now I can go ahead and show you what it's going to look like. So when I do this and I duplicate these, you can see that when I line them up, they continuously form a wall. And that works the same up here as well. So you bring that right there and you can see it just keeps stacking on it looks nice and like you just keep on going like that so what I need to do now is we just transform this into a whole shape and that is your brick stencil um, let me make it out typically where I do it so what I do is I will usually have like this a little bit longer so you can have this square but you can also just kind of lengthen it a little bit make sure those are aligned and then I'll duplicate and duplicate and I usually make it like about that long and then I will group it and boom you've got a nice little brick stencil and I'll show you how this works so let's say we have a wall Now, obviously, you would scale these down to your proper scale, but I usually don't make them in like to the scale when I first make it. It makes it easier to make it, and then I'll shrink it down to its proper scale. So what I do is use this like a stamp. So first of all, I duplicate it and then just put a spare copy like over there somewhere. So then I come in and I let it sink in about halfway. And I'm just going to do this one right here. I'm not gonna let's uh just let's let's shrink down the wall. Now just a warning when you do this, it will make your Tinkercad run pretty slow. So I like to do the brick patterns last. Um, but we're gonna just wanna make sure everything is lined up properly. So now we can just highlight everything and then we group it and boom you got a brick texture and then obviously you do it to scale but there you go that's how you do a brick texture and you can see it's got a nice little bit of depth so you'll be able to get some weathering materials in there but that is how I do brick texture 
I do have some news regarding the Etsy store. No, I'm not closing it down, but I am going to be limiting what I produce. The bottom line is that it's just me making and shipping the buildings, and it's a lot of work for not a ton of return on investment. Now, I don't make these buildings to build a huge model railroad empire, and while the margins for the materials are good, the time commitment is not. So what I've decided to do is look at my Etsy statistics and see what buildings sold the most and focus on on those. I will be also focusing on in scale right now, but if they sell well, I may consider going back into HO scale and Z scale. Now, if you have a question that you would like me to answer in next month's Q&A, you can leave it in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, drink some coffee, and happy railroading.